I'm Logan Thomas. Uh, this is the General Tire Decision Maker Sled, and it seems like we get a lot of questions on YouTube, Facebook stuff. How do these things work, and what makes them tick? So that's what we're going to talk about. First of all, how do we hook a sled to a vehicle? One massive chain. That's one inch chain, weighs about 60, 70 pounds. A lot of times you see a vehicle break away from a sled or something and say, oh, he broke the chain. No, he broke a hitch. That chain is not gonna break. You see here, these are steer chains, hooked in about halfway. If a vehicle gets crossed up, that'll keep the chain taut from getting one completely sideways in front of the sled quite as bad. Um, kill switch cable, hooked to the back of the vehicle sled was to, the vehicles to break away it'll pull a kill switch diesel it shuts the uh, guillotine on the turbo shuts the air off if it's a spark ignition vehicle it'll shut the mag off or kill the spark to the engine the cable is not just a dead cable it's hooked to a electric engine electric motor up underneath the rails there's a button in the cab i can press the button pull the cable and shut down the vehicle if they get out of control or way out of bounds or anything real bad in here you can see uh, that's, a major, that's a majorly heavy duty bicycle chain. That's a 140H roller chain that drives the box forward and backward. Um, this arm here with the rollers, when the box hits that and pulls it forward, that will kick the box drive clutch out of gear as well as activate the push down hydraulics on the back of the pan. And we'll hit that in a minute and see the air horn. That's for pulling antiques with a speed limit. Here's our trip switch. It's slid all the way in the forward position right now. Uh, hydraulics that hold the back of the pan up when they're in the reset position here. There's a bolt underneath the box that when the box passes over, will trip two micro switches inside this housing that will release the hydraulics to just let the pan fall down onto the ground and let the pan start doing its digging. Uh, there's two switches in there, wired in parallel. As long as one switch breaks the circuit, the pan will fall. I also have an override switch in the cab to drop it myself for a safety reason. We'll get it, hit that in a few minutes. Right there are the actual micro switches that run the box clutch and the push down from the arm up front. This cylinder here hooked to the cam arm and the once again rather large chain in there that's what actually holds the back of the pan up for going down the track and releasing it to drop and all that stuff and under here these cylinders that is our push down system uh, these cylinders are pressurized from a hydraulic accumulator up front in between the rails uh, box hits the micro switches these cylinders push up on the bottom of the rails and will actually lift the back of the sled off the ground and you see us stopped with all the all the tires hanging in the air spinning because these cylinders right here have pushed a lot of force a lot of pressure on the bottom of the rails to pick the sled up semi-truck axles the front one all this axle does is drive the box it doesn't have anything to do with driving the sled around its sole purpose is to drive the box down the track for a run the back axle is hooked directly to the transmission and all it does is drive the sled around on the ground this axle doesn't have anything to do with driving the box if you look in the box there's five holes on each side that will hold a 2,000 pound weight. And then one big hole in the middle there holds two 1,500 pound weights. So 3,000 plus 20,000 can load 23,000 pounds of lead right here in the box. Now back here, the aluminum box there, that is the Profab transmission that actually drives the weight box. And there are only five speeds for running the box forward, five different ratios. Right in front of it there under that cover is the air clutch that 
connects and dis disconnects the drive axle from driving the box forward. Uh, back underneath there, you can see there's a big SQHD uh, semi-truck rear end that is hooked directly with the sprockets and the chains to drive the box. Uh, you can see, I take my hat, these adjustable stops are sitting in the frame rail there. They're in the one hole position. You can move them forward three more holes, or you can take them out completely and let the box hit the set of rubbers there at the back. That is just for deciding where the box starts for a class. Once you set it for a class, you don't change it, but you can start with the box all the way back, one hole, two holes, three holes, and all that does is starts the box further forward to kind of make the front of the sled heavier for taking off, and it also makes your box top out a little quicker every hole you block it out. So most sleds you see are powered by an air-cooled six-cylinder uh, Deutz diesel engine. It's about 180 horsepower, uh, runs an air compressor, alternator, of course, and of course our air conditioner compressor for the cab. Keep us nice and cool during the summer. The sled is tied to an Allison automatic transmission, which is in the center of the sled here, by this big drive belt. It's a 5V drive belt. It's originally purpose was like for a hay baler or something, and somebody figured that was a good way to hook an engine to a transmission and a pulling sled. But here you can see most of the workings of it. Uh, here again is our big SQHD rear. And there is no differential or spider gears in that. That is one solid shaft from one side to the other. Just has a ring gear bolted to it. And as long as the pinion's turning, it's going to turn both sides equally to drive the box forward. There's a lot of force and a lot of strain right in there. So there's no, don't want to worry about carriers giving out or spider gears getting crossed or something like that. She's just a straight shaft. In here is a 3V belt that is hooked to the box drive line. That belt goes directly down, hooked to a pulley right on the tail shaft of the Allison right below it. That is how we use the engine and transmission to power the box back to the back of the sled after a run when it's at the front. Or if you see us at the starting line, we'll move the box out to put weights in and stuff. That belt with an, is how the engine is tied to the box drive line and it just rides there all the time there's an air cylinder underneath on a tensioner pulley to engage and disengage it. Uh, if we're pulling, then the belt is disengaged and the belt just as long for the free ride. Our steer tires on the front of the pan here, we flip up and down on hydraulics, switching the cab. The hubs and spindles here are similar to like a three quarter ton pickup and they're tractor tires moving around in the dirt. That's how we steer around with them. So in here is where the magic happens, I guess you'd say. You've seen pull videos before over my shoulder. I'm riding down the track with this black knob right here pushed in. That is the box drive clutch. It is hooked to a safety cable that runs down up front that the box will pull out when it gets to the front in case the electric over air solenoids happen to fail. There's a spring hooked to the cable in the box tops it will pull this out just as a kind of a fail safe to try to keep parts from breaking now riding down the track we bounce around a lot of a lot of times i'll have two fingers just holding that forward just so bouncing around the cable doesn't get tight and pop out for some reason but otherwise i'm just holding it forward when the box tops it will pull itself out underneath my fingers anyway also on our box clutch situation here our red and green light christmas tree switch here I can turn to green without our box clutching gear. We won't have a green light. The green light is not flashing until you push the clutch in, it puts air to it, and you can see our green light flashing. And it will stay on with the box all the way forward. Sometimes you'll see me grab this switch right here, flip it in as we're still coming to a stop. That's just an air control that controls the air tensioner pulley on the drive belt under the cab. I'm flipping that in so when we stop, all I gotta do is pull it in reverse to start running the box back. 
That's a shifter hooked to a shift cable hooked to our Allison automatic. This controller here controls the two speed shifter on the rear axle for driving the sled around. There's one more here on the dash that controls the front axle. Both axles are two speed rear ends. We use the two speed shifters for locking them in and out of gear. That way we don't have to, when we flip them in neutral, we can go down the road. The rear ends are in neutral. The drive shafts are not turning. We don't have to take axles out or take drive shafts out or nothing like that. Um, lots of toggle switches. This one right here is just for our steering wheels up on the pan. This is for our pan, re pan lift, pan reset. You run the box back, you gotta pick the pan back up. Flip a switch. Red and green light, Christmas light switch. Right here is, we're having a bad day panel. Pan drop and push down emergency switches. Either one of those I hit will drop or activate the push down on the pan. It will also turn the green light off and turn the red light on. Box brake. Change were to happen to break, something in the driveline gives away, smack that down, lock our box down in the rail. That will also give a red light and turn our green light off. Kill switch up front. While that does not give a red light, we're not required to do that. Uh, that will kill the engine, whatever up front. That's just an air horn to get everybody's attention. That's our measuring system. It's an onboard system more or less run for antique tractors, farm stocks, brush pull type stuff. Anything bigger than that, we're running the laser, but this also keeps track of our ground speed. I can look at that at the end of a run and tell how fast we went, more or less to tell you how far we're going. Over here, of course, the parking brake, one switch for each of the mud flaps up front. We have to fold them in to get past a scraper or roller or something. The cables that are hooked to the axles that it's a hydraulic rack that pulls four cables that holds our axles up to the bottom of the frame rails when they push down, picks the back of the sled up. We have to run the sled with the air ride down on the track. We pump them up to go down the road for suspension and stuff. Um, on the dash here, you'll see that gauges for engine, oil pressure, air supply, bolt meter. Um, our warning lights. This is for the cooling fan on the diesel engine if the belts were to break, low air pressure, any of our hydraulic functions, the box belt, the drive rear end. And these lights here are your go lights. That tells you your front differential is locked in to drive the box. Your pan is up in reset position. Your push down is in the reset position and the clutch is engaged. This is the tractor cab. We've still got two pedals for our brakes. They're plumbed into one air valve under the dash here. That is our wheel brakes, just like a road tractor. And applying them, if we're going down the track, it's just like the pan drop or anything else. We'll turn the green light off and red light on. Signal everybody we're trying to stop. And that's just the gas pedal for the engine. So that's basically pulling sleds 101 so to speak there's a lot more mechanics and switches and electrical stuff to it this is our basic starter kit of how these things work and what we do thanks for watching